This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of Design Safe Radio. I'm your host, Dan Zayner, and here with me is uh, my colleague, Krishna Kumar from University of Texas at Austin, and it's football season. So we've got the appropriate background in the back. So go hook up horns. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Good to have you here, Krishna. Um, we're here talking today about the Nary Hackathon. I'm really excited to, to hear some more about that. So to get us started, can you give us uh, a little bit about yourself uh, and then how you're connected with the Nary Hackathon? Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me, Dan, and great to be on the Design Safe Radio. Um, I'm Krishna Kumar. I'm an assistant professor at University of Texas in Austin. I started three years ago. Um, in, in 2019, uh, I m primarily work on numerical modeling, machine learning, explainable AI applied to natural hazards. Uh, and I have uh, Professor Rachi next door to me. So I uh, got involved with Design Safe in my second year here and been part of the Design Safe 2.0 since then. And we organized a Design Safe Academy in 2021, which was an entirely virtual event, which had a little bit of workshop and a hackathon event at the end. Uh, this year in 2022, we had uh, the first ever NERI hackathon, fully in-person event, which is organized uh, by DesignSafe and Sim Center together. Cool. So for, for those who are not in the coding programming space, like what is a hackathon? Like aside from NERI, the hackathon, but like, what does that concept really uh, mean? Like, what what is a hackathon in general? Let's start there. Yeah, I think that as soon as you hear the word hack, you think something bad, thanks to all the media. <laughs> <laughs> and people think of, oh, breaking into a secure account. That's not what we do. Uh, hackathon is trying to change your program, make and edits to your program, add new features to your program to make it more useful. Um, so a hackathon is like a compressed uh three-day event, in this case for us it was three days, uh, where different teams work together 24 by, uh, by three days and create a wonderful product at the end of three days. Uh, so we start off by trying to change the world and sometimes we almost do in just three days. It's quite amazing how much motivated students can do in just three days. So it's three days of just coding. There are mentors who are around to help them with developing code. They have a particular target of what they want to do, and we guide them and help them as they try to tackle that problem, come up with some innovative solutions. But they also have the time pressure of three days to finish uh, a research type question. Wow. So what what results did you see come out of the, uh, the previous hackathons? What were some of the exciting things you saw happen? Uh, it was quite a lot of different uh, natural hazard topics. So uh, we started off with earthquake type problems and some groups worked on um, wind and fire and there was also hurricanes and storm surge. So there's different aspects. Um, most of it, the current hype is machine learning and AI, uh -huh. which means everyone was trying to uh, learn AI and machine learning and then apply it to their own research fields, in this case, earthquakes or landslides or uh, fire, and as, as well as storm surge, come up with a model which can synthesize all the data which is already there in Design Safe, run their simulations on Design Safe get those data, make a simplified model using machine learning, and then be able to predict what is likely to happen. Sometimes come up with um, hazard maps uh, or even a surrogate model, which will allow you to do much more test cases and simulations to understand what the impact could be. Um, so a lot of interesting projects addressing different uh, hazard regimes. So when, when you say machine learning, um... It's kind of a buzzword in the, the programming sphere these days, but so, some listening may have never heard of it before, or maybe heard it, but don't know what it means. So can you kind of distill that down, what, what that means uh, for, for those who are only partially familiar with it? So most of engineering historically has been using physics-based approaches. So we use partial differential equations or uh basic physics like force equals mass times acceleration appears in different forms in most of our problems. Um, and we've been tackling that. 
But as we get to more and more complex interactions between hazards and humans, or even complex ha hazards, like, for example, a storm surge uh, interacting with buildings, you not only need to model how a tsunami might develop, how is it going to interact with the debris around it, the buildings being hit by debris, so the modeling becomes a lot more complex. Uh, what we've been doing uh, over the last few decades in Design Safe is they have lots and lots of data which we've been collecting. Uh, machine learning is a nice approach which allows us to look at through these data and what we previously used to do like regression analysis or simplified machine learning approaches. So if you're doing linear regression, you have done machine learning, but a very simplified version of it. Uh, but the more data you have, the more complex models you could potentially build, and that allows you to come up with new physics or even uh, develop new theories behind these complex hazards. Typically, machine learning is a black box. So you have your data, you put it into an algorithm, and the algorithm produces an output. And the problem is these algorithms don't explain why they produce the output. So uh, one of the interesting projects this uh, year we had was they were not only using machine learning, but they were trying to explain why the machine learning made that particular choice. Uh, so we can say, okay, the ground shakes a lot, then it might potentially lead to a failure. Um, so if it doesn't do that, then there's something wrong in our data set or the models which you use. So it is interesting to see our students push that boundary of machine learning, which always been a black box. Now break that open, look into, uh, and not just blindly use the data, but yeah, use it in a correct way. So you bring in all the physics from what we've been doing for over hundreds of years. So you could use this on a problem. Let's let's say you had data for. Um the city of Portland on what the building inventory is and a bit about, you know, how many wood frame buildings with soft stories and how many masonry buildings you have and how many steel buildings you have. And based on some experimental data, you could say, given a set of earthquake inputs, here's what would fail and let them and create a, a set of uh, parameters an algorithm that when you say, Hey, here's an earthquake, tell me mm -hmm. what buildings fail, your your machine learning uh, system would basically be, would be able to look at <clears throat> each of those buildings based on that algorithm that you've programmed in and the earthquake that you fed it and say, yeah, this is likely what's going to fail. Yeah, I think it is, I'm giving another example. I'm not trying to find an example for each uh, application yeah. you came up with, but it's interesting that another you will build like more complex numerical models like finite elements or finite difference type solvers or even open foam if you want to do fluid coupled simulations. And you would have to run these on really large scale systems like Texas Advanced Computing Center. So you have design safe to give you free access to those compute resources, leverage them, but maybe you will be able to run two or three at most 10 simulations at these large regional scales. Uh, so instead, if we can take those models, take those simulation data sets together, and then train these machine learning model, you kind of develop a simplified but really fast surrogate model, uh, uh -huh. which will give roughly the overall performance as the more accurate model. Uh, but now you can do it at a much bigger scale, especially like the regional scale you're talking about, then it becomes really simplified. The benefit of using Design Safe is then you have tons and tons of data, which has already been published already yeah. on Design Safe. And the compute resource is also available at the same place. Use Jupyter, fetch your data, train your model, run your simulations, develop a surrogate model all in one nice pipeline. And the students were able to do it all on Design Safe and develop these regional scale models using simplified surrogate machine learning models. Wow. That's really cool. So are, are we talking like undergrads, grad students, PhD students, postdocs, like who's going to these hackathons? Uh, we've been trying to get graduate students. I think it would be ideal if you're in the first or second year graduate student. So we could train you on how to do use these design safe and some center tools and then leverage those. So uh, I would prefer personally, um, for first and second year students to attend this and benefit from it. And that's usually our um, target population as well, like people who attend the hackathon. Um, we do have a Design Safe Academy, a two-day event 
prior to the hackathon. So you're not thrown into the deep end. We, in fact, train you in how to use these tools in this academy. And then you go to the Near E hackathon where you're a little bit more prepared. Uh, you've seen these tools before, where you practiced as tutorial sections, um, and then do the project. The reason why I personally prefer graduate students, uh, especially early stage graduate students, is that they can go back to their university and apply it in their own research work. Um, you, of course, you're welcome to come and do it if you're a third or fourth year or final year PhD students. Uh, but then like the benefit is a lot more significant if you're just starting. So right. I'm trying to recruit more first and second years to come do the hackathon every year. Great. So if uh, folks are wanting to get into the next hackathon, where can they get some more info on that? Uh, so we'll be announcing somewhere around April on the Design Safe website. So the Design Safe has a, a link um, called the Neary Hackathon. So visit that and that's where you're going to get those information uh, about future events. So we plan to organize it every year um, in connection with Sim Center and also look out for the Design Safe Academy. So will be a combined event where you can have both the training as well as try out what you learn in real time. Great. Is, is there a cost to join? Is it free? Like, what's the detail It is there? free. And we, in fact, gave uh, travel allowances for people to come over to UT Austin. Um, we are giving out travel supports. And especially uh, if you're first or second year PhD students, we try to cover as much as possible. Um, so um, don't worry that it's a four or five day long event. We try to cover as much as possible to help you. And you want to focus on the event here itself. Great. Um... Where can people follow along from maybe some examples from past events, look at data sets, maybe start trying some things out before applying for uh, next year's event? So the Design Save YouTube channel is a good place because we have last year's and this year's uh, winners of the hackathon um, present their work and those are recorded and is being published on YouTube. Uh, the projects are also available on the Design Safe data depot. So that's a good place to uh, search for our hackathon projects and find those. Um, all the resources are also available in the Design Safe data depot. Um, so you can try out what we've been doing uh, these years. Um, in addition to that, there are also use case products uh, from Design Safe, um, which is also on the Design Safe workspace uh, link. Um, so some of the projects leverage those existing use cases as well in creating these hackathon projects. So uh, check our YouTube channel, uh, data depot, and the Design Safe workspace link, uh, which has more information. Great. We'll make sure to post some links to that in uh, the description of uh, this video and the podcast. So if you're listening to this or watching it on our YouTube channel, we'll be happy. Uh, should have the links for you down below. Uh, Krishna, it's been great having you here uh, talking about something that I haven't even gotten anywhere close to before. So it's really cool to learn about the, the hackathon. Can't wait to see uh, what 2023 brings for all the teams going through that. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan. It was a pleasure. Today's episode of Design Safe Radio. This show is sponsored by the National Science Foundation, grant number 2129782. You can subscribe to Design Safe Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please leave us a review so that we can improve the show and also help others find our episodes in iTunes. Thanks for your feedback and support. We really appreciate it. You can find out more about NARI at designsafe-ci.org on Facebook at Design Safe Radio or on Twitter at Nary Design Safe.